Hello, church. Um, it's good to be with you again this morning, and I pray that this day is starting out well for you. Uh, either way, I think we can just have that attitude that God has gone before me today, and he's created a path, and my responsibility is simply to follow that path and, and yield to him in whatever ways he wants to direct me. I know that's easier said than done sometimes, because often we find ourselves in circumstances that uh, are pretty overwhelming and, and uh yeah, it's at those points, I think, that we get the opportunity to see God do the most amazing things. That, As I was uh, praying with a young family the other day, uh, praying over their newborn baby who is uh, uh, really uh, facing the potentiality of, of serious long-term brain damage. And I just, you know, I share with them, I said, we, we pray and ask God to give us what we want and we accept what he gives. And I, I, I just believe in God that he's going to do a miracle until he makes it clear he's not. And that's kind of the way I think we need to approach every day of our life because a day can start off so bad and you think, oh my gosh, this is going to be a horrible day. When in fact it could turn around and become one of the most blessed days that what God was doing not, was not simply trying to punish you or make things hard. He was really kind of using obstacles and adversity to redirect your life in paths that otherwise you wouldn't have gone through. And that's really kind of the, the idea of the whole life of faith. It's not knowing what's coming next, but it's responding to the circumstances with a confidence that God knows everything that's going on and he has my best interest at stake. Uh, yesterday, I started by reading out of uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, and I want to reread it again because I didn't really get a chance to go through all of it. I said there were really uh, what I call the four Bs, uh, things to be, in, in this passage where he tells us we need to be humble. Secondly, we need to be alert. Thirdly, we need to be sober. And fourthly, we need to be firm. And I want to kind of go into uh, explaining in de detail or more detail what exactly each of those things applies. I mean, when he begins again, as we talked at length yesterday about being humble, um, this came to my mind because uh, I found I find that there's a lot of people who are understandably asking the question, when are we going to reopen and have regular services? And I shared with you briefly that we're in the process of trying to determine how to respond to that uh, and uh, with and to do it in a godly way, in a Christ-centered way. And I say that because um, when we talk about being humble, what humble applies is that you begin advancing in prayer. As John Knox used to say, um, the, the army that advances on its knees need not repeat. And I think sometimes in our politicized world, we can have kind of a knee-jerk reaction when we see things that aren't right or don't make sense to us. And I think it's so important as a discipline in my life spiritually to step back and not let my emotions run wild, even as he says here, you know, that uh, uh, not giving place to anxiety, casting all your anxiety on him, because it's that anxiousness that that uh, basically that slow level running fear inside of us that often provokes us to react when we would have been better off to stop, look and listen for a few minutes and really hear what God has to say. And that's really coming down to when you, we're facing a problem like this one where we would like to open the church up, but we're finding that it is essentially against the law. Um, we're, we need to begin by praying, Lord, your will be done. That if, if you want us to open up, then we will do that. But we want to know for sure that this is what you want and this is the way that you want it to happen. And there's a second, secondary aspect of that prayer is that in Proverbs 21.1, it says the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord and that the Lord will direct them like water courses. In other words, um, in the Judean desert, there will be these flash floods, these rain clouds will come and suddenly the, the water, because it doesn't, isn't able to really percolate into the soil, will just gather and create these flash floods, these literally walls of water, sometimes 20, 30 feet high uh, in a place that otherwise it never has any water. And uh, it's interesting because I know each year when we go to Israel and we go up to the springs in Engedi, um, the trail every year is different because when the floodwaters come in the winter, um, it cuts a new path. In other words, uh, what we find by saying that the king's heart is like the water course and the Lord will direct them, that the water doesn't direct its path. The path is directed by the Lord and the water follows that path. And essentially he's saying that when we talk about the kings, we need to understand that, or in this case, governors and presidents and other rulers, that 
God ultimately has authority over their hearts. And I know that's hard to believe us when we see such a uh, non-Christian, even anti-Christian uh, perspectives and, and laws and things being promoted. And yet God says, ultimately, I have power and authority over those people. Uh, one old saint told me years ago when there was a president who was elected was, uh, was a morally challenged individual. And, and she made an interesting statement. She says, I, I pray that every time he does something that honors God and is according to his will, that the Lord will bless him. And that every time he does something that's contrary to the Lord's ways, the Lord's hand would be against him. And as I watch that politician's career, even up until today, I see a man who has been deeply troubled and repeatedly exposed uh, for the very sinful acts that he is continuing to be guilty of. And it's sad because I watch him old, I watch him withering away, and uh, you realize that the consequences of sin are pretty dramatic. And as a result, I mean, he and his wife have been uh, really kind of shamefully uh, put out of the political arena. They're desperately grasping to try to get a foothold someplace. But the reality is that even their own political allies are basically looking them as, as being a dirty laundry, and they just don't want them involved in the process anymore. So you have to understand that God has throughout history done some amazing things. And I think that that should be our first and foremost prayer. Though Every day we should be praying in humility, saying, God, you control these people who are in authority. You can change their hearts. And I've seen that happen not only nationally, I've seen it happen internationally. And I really, really believe that, that God has that ability to raise up one. He says, I raise one up and I bring another one down. So when I'm thinking about a lot of these uh, contrary politicians, my first thought is, Lord, bring this person down, humble them, expose them to the point where they can't, there's no place left for them to hide. And I, I know that in today's political climate in our country, the, there's a long list of these people. And I, all I can tell you is I'm praying the list. I'm really praying that God will bring them to repentance, that he'll turn their hearts and they'll promote those things that are good, or else he will humble them and to the point where they're removed from office and they no longer have the power to do what they do. Because one of the things is that Lord Acton said many a couple of centuries ago, he said, uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's what's happens with many of these people. They get really, really corrupted. So, you know, so this evening I'm going into a meeting and we're going to be talking about uh, looking at a lot of the dynamics legally, politically, uh, biblically, and so forth, how God would have us respond to this current situation. And I would just ask, be in prayer for us, because uh, we want to begin by humbling ourselves and saying, God, show us uh, how we're supposed to respond, whatever that is. And what may seem obvious to one may not be obvious uh, to God. We used to have a saying that we learn not to say anymore. We used to cut face decisions we say oh well that's a no-brainer as if it's obvious what we should do and many times we found that what that really showed was we weren't using our brain at all and that was our big mistake and we regretfully had to repent for making decisions that didn't begin with this humble attitude of saying god don't let me be driven by my anxieties but instead let me trust you i want to pick this up tomorrow so uh, i look forward to having this conversation go on with you again uh tomorrow blessings